Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on Audimotive. I got the oil analysis back from Blackstone Labs and here are the results. For those of you using a phone or a tablet, I can zoom in a little, but basically aluminum, iron, and tin are way higher than they should be. And here is their prognosis. You can pause and read it if you want. What I'm going to do is I want to check a few more things on the car before I decide what to do with it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a compression test, how to do a cylinder leak down test, and how to check your oil pressure. The compression test is checking the condition of the pistons and the rings, as well as the valves and the valve seats. I want to make sure the cylinders are properly sealed and we get good compression. If something is damaged, I will see low compression pressure. The leak down test uses compressed air and shows how much air is escaping from the cylinder. Nothing is 100% leak proof, but I want to make sure it is an acceptable amount of leakage. The oil pressure test is self-explanatory. I will be checking the oil pressure created by the oil pump. I'm going to start with the compression test. First you'll need to remove the fuse for the fuel pump. Then go ahead and remove the spark plug wires and the spark plugs. Thread in the compression gauge and have someone crank the car until the pressure stops building. This should only take a couple seconds. If it takes longer than that, skip right to the leak down test. Record this pressure. If you want to be super accurate, release the pressure and repeat this two or three times and get the average. Do this on all the cylinders. You want all the cylinders to be within 10% of each other. In my case, I had 180, 190, 195, and 200 PSI. Using this formula, I find that the difference percentage between the highest and the lowest pressures comes out to be 10.5%. Next up is a cylinder leak down test. I'm using a long screwdriver to place the cylinder at top dead center on the compression stroke. If you end up at the top of the intake stroke, you will know as soon as you hook up the compressed air. At that point, you'll just need to turn the crank another 360 degrees. Once you have it at top dead center, thread the gauge into the cylinder and make sure the knob is turned to close. Then hook up the air hose from the compressor and open the knob until the gauge reads 0%. Go ahead and walk around the car and check for leaks. Listen at the tailpipe, air escaping from there means the exhaust valves are leaking. Air from the intake means the intake valves are leaking. Bubbles in the radiator mean air is leaking past the head gasket. Remove the oil cap. Air from there could mean the head gasket or the piston rings are leaking. The gauge will not remain at zero. Nothing is completely sealed. But you are looking for excessive leaks. If everything looks okay and there are no major leaks and the gauge shows an acceptable number, turn the knob closed, unhook everything and repeat for the next cylinder. In my case, all the cylinders were at or under 10%, which is good. Between the compression test and the leak down test, I can say that the top end is okay. The piston rings and valves are sealing pretty good and doing their job. I'm going to put everything back together for the oil pressure test. Don't forget to plug in the fuel pump fuse. To check the oil pressure, find the oil pressure sensor. On the Subaru EJ25 motor, it is right behind the alternator. Remove the sensor and connect the gauge in its place. You might need to find the matching thread adapter. Start the car and check the pressure. The pressure will be higher on cold oil and should drop as the oil warms up. After letting the car idle for a little, the oil pressure on the Subaru dropped to below 10 PSI. According to the manual, the pressure should be at least 14 PSI at 600 RPM. This is showing me that something is wrong. Next, I'm going to drop the oil pan and check the pickup screen for debris. It is very possible that something is clogging the pickup screen, causing low pressure, which in turn is starving the bearings, causing the knock. Or the bearings are falling apart, creating debris that is clogging the pickup screen. But I won't know any of that until the oil pan comes up. So thanks for watching guys, and stay tuned for more videos.